Good morning and God bless you. Well, today is going to be a little bit different. Oh, let me click the button because we still going live with Instagram on today. But welcome to Monday morning. It is, we're, we've entered into a brand new month. This is February 3rd. We are already on February 3rd, entered into February 3rd. So I'm excited about this day. Um, things are going to be a little different when you see this on this morning because We've had technical difficulties and streaming um, live today was not working. You know what? I didn't even think about, oh, well, that wouldn't have worked, though. I was thinking about if we could have just actually did it on Facebook, but that would have left out YouTube and Periscope. And I don't want to leave you guys out. Actually, I probably could have still did. You know what? That's all right. We'll get it together. We'll get it together. Um... So, good morning. I thank God for this day. Um, so excited about it. I'm going to do sound. Ooh. So, we could go live on Periscope and do sound. Good morning, DKS Express. You get to join us on today. So, I wonder why mine wasn't working. All right, I see that one came up. Um, we're doing live this morning, but we're... Uh, well, Periscope, we're going to do it by sound. Instagram, we still together. And Facebook and YouTube will have to view this at a later time. Um, I'm excited about today. It's a brand new day. Uh, I feel like I've been gone a long time. And it's just been the weekend. Um, but I'm excited about it. So normally we put up our affirmation. So if this is your first time, this is what we speak over our lives. For those that have been here. Um, who are here on today viewing this, then you'll get to um, speak your affirmation. Yes, still on today. So we'll get that up. <laughs> he back there like I ain't got to do nothing because we... <laughs> yes, we do. All right, our affirmation. Oh, I can put it up for Instagram. So I can hold it up so y'all can actually see it now. I printed it up backwards. This is what we speak over our lives. So we speak it with excitement. We speak it loud. We're proud about being able to speak this thing over our life so on the count of three oh if you have not had an opportunity to go and get this download it save it to your phone you can always go over to the website hiddenandgod.com or you can go over um download the app go in hit the affirmations button and you can get this affirmation downloaded um, and you can hang it up give it to a family member a friend but we want to speak these things over our life so on the count of three we will get Say it with so much enthusiasm, so much emotion that it gets down on the inside. So one, two, three. I am everything God created me to be. I have faith in God. I hope in God. And I have the confidence to believe God. I have greatness in me and all around me. I am prosperous and favored in the things of God. And I am abundantly blessed in all that I do excited about it good morning good morning good morning good morning to those um coming on instagram today all right so we gonna get straight into it because this will be kind of weird for folks who are gonna be viewing this just as a video and not a live interaction um on the other platforms this morning good to see you miss terry so good to see you all right um this morning we're talking about four stages four stages of testing and we're going to uh first Samuel 28 on this morning. 1 Samuel 28. And we're going to read just four short verses. Four short, short, short verses. And then we'll see what God has to say. Uh, get into 
the word. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. Father, we just bless your name for this day. It is a day that you have created, O oh God. You have made this day, and you've allowed us to enter into it. So, Father, we will rejoice. We will be glad in this day, O oh God. We will take um, just refuge in you on today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we've come this morning seeking you, your kingdom. We come seeking your righteousness, O oh God. We come seeking your heart and your directions towards us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we know that as we do so, oh God, you make available everything that uh, we need in your word, oh God. Father, we know that you supply all of our needs, oh God, as we focus on you. Father, we thank you, oh God, that you allow us to draw closer to you in the name of Jesus. And as we draw close to you, you draw close to us, oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for every assignment in today, oh God. Father, we just want our, our hearts to be open and receptive to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we may be obedient to doing your will, oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that even as we seek you, O oh God, we seek to know your will, what your will is for us, O oh God, what your will is for our lives in this day. So, Father, we thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning. Lord, we just come asking you with hearts of repentance, O oh God, for the things that we've done to fall short of your glory, O oh God. Father, reveal that which we are unaware of, O oh God, and even that which we know we've done to fall short. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us, O oh God. Show us the error of our ways, O oh God, that we may that we may come out of the sin, that we may turn from the wicked thing, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Your word says that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, then would you hear from us, O oh God. So, Father, we just thank you, O oh God, for giving us every opportunity to turn, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for just... As you have allowed us to get up, you've given us another opportunity to get things right with you, O oh God, to walk the path that you've laid out before us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we endeavor to do so, O oh God, Father, we thank you that you shield us, you protect us, O oh God. You've given us everything that we need, O oh God, to uh, to come against, to resist, O oh God, temptation, to resist the enemy, O oh God, to resist every distraction, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the level of discernment that you've given us to us, O oh God. We ask that you would heighten our our senses and our uh, abilities, O oh God, in, in discernment, O oh God, so we would know even the more. And Father, we thank you, O oh God, that we may not be uh, that much smarter than the enemy, but we know that you are, O oh God. We know that you know all things, O oh God, and that you defeat our enemy. In the name of Jesus. So, Father, we just give you glory and honor for this day, O oh God. We bless your name. We thank you for health and strength, O oh God. Strengthening us in our bodies, in our hearts, in our minds, O oh God. Strengthen us for the journey that lies ahead of us in Jesus' name. And, Father, we just put on the full armor of God that we, we would be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy, O oh God. We come against every strategy, O oh God, every plot, every plan, every trick that he has devised to come against us, O oh God. Father, Father, we thank you that in you we are victorious in Jesus' name. And we just give you glory and honor for this day. We we just worship you. We magnify your name. We thank you for being Alpha and Omega in Jesus' name. Amen. You know what? This day is, is the, the, the enemy is trying it. My computer just went to a whole blue screen. <laughs> it just did the whole blue depth and, and just everything is gone right now. Woohoo! Technology, you gotta love it. <laughs> All right, so we gonna do this. I have to try to restart that. Or oh, you know what? Even as it does so, I have other devices, so we'll just try it on one of the other ones. That's what I do. Ah, and may not even need that one. All right, let me let me let me get a page up here. Even the Bible app, I mean the uh, um, website, Bible website didn't want to work today. Very, it was interesting. All right, give me a second to pull this up. One moment. You know it's something good. You know it's got to be something good when the enemy do, do work this hard. <laughs> he just stopped the whole stream. Oh, I don't even know what. Ooh. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. Uh, 
Uh. Oh man. Oh, look, even this one having trouble. Okay. Wait, what in the world? All right, I think we, oh, I almost got it. All right, we in first Samuel 28 today. Okay, this is really tripping. Yes, all right. First Samuel 28, verse 16 through 19. 16 through 19 and I'm gonna read it in I'm gonna read it in the amplified 16 says Samuel said why then do you ask me seeing that the Lord has turned from you and has become your enemy 17 says the Lord has done to you as he said through me he would do for he has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to your neighbor David because you did not obey the voice of the Lord or execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore, the Lord have done this thing to you this day. Moreover, verse 19, moreover, the Lord will also give Israel with you into the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me among the dead. The Lord also will give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. So what, what do we have happening here? Um, Saul, you know, Saul decided uh, a, a lot of things, <laughs> but Saul lost his mind, to put it a little plainly. Saul lost his mind. Um, he sought David's life. He sought to kill David, and he, he lost his anointing. He, he lost his anointing to be, to be king. God removed it from him. Re removed it and so now he finds himself in a place where the army the Philistine army is getting ready to come up against him and he sought the Lord for an answer and the Lord has not answered him he's he's not answered him through his dreams he's not answered him through the prophets he's not answered him in any kind of way so now he's going to take it into his own hands after he um, got rid of all of the people all of the, the, the mediums and the soothsayers and the so-called uh, psychic folks, he got rid of them. And now he's he wants to talk to them because um, he, he, he can't get an answer from God. So he's called this woman to come to him and, and, and wants her to find Samuel. Samuel is now dead. But he want to talk to Samuel to see if Samuel will give him an answer or insight into what's, what's happening with this army, what's going to come about. And so when, when the woman sees, when, when she goes into whatever it is that they go into to pull up the, these, these dead folks, she recognized that this was Saul, he was the king. And she thought that he was trying to trick her um, in, into killing her. But she actually, Samuel comes up and tells him, just what God said he was going to do to you. Is, is being done and so many times we go you know we go through these these testings when we are when God anoints us to do a work when he anoints us to do a work for him we have to go through I'm telling you, we've talked about it so many times through we have to go through a preparation season where God is preparing us he knows who we are but he's preparing us even to the point so that we will know who we are and know how we operate and know how to be in the will of God and we have God gives us free will and we have a choice. He anoints us for work and then he begins to test us. He tests our hearts to know whether or not we're going to stay in that uh, uh, or be in that place or grow in the way that he desires for us to grow or are we going to go off in another direction. And so there's kind of four ways that we'll be tested. Four ways and we're going we gonna to tap into those four ways that we, we can be tested um, when God anoints us for work. So there's a pattern of testing that appears to take place whenever God calls us to something. Let me just do it this way. This will work out better. All right, I might have to sit this on top of it. <laughs> four ways. Four ways. All right, so God often takes us through four major tests to determine um, if we'll achieve the ultimate calling 
that's on our lives. And the way that we respond, our response to the test is the deciding factor on whether we can advance to the next responsibility or the next level that God has for us. So we have to pass one test in order to get to the next level where God is trying to take us in his kingdom. And so one of the first places, um, the uh, first test that we go through is a test of control. It's, it's control. It's one of the things that, oops, I ain't trying to copy that. All right, so Saul spent most of his time as king trying to prevent other people from getting what he had. He, he, he spent a lot of his time as king trying to protect what he had. And that's one of the, the ways that he fell against David. So Saul never got to the place with God where he was just completely grateful for what God had done for him. He wasn't grateful for what God had done. He didn't look at when when David came when when uh, and it nothing happens by chance. So when David showed up on the scene to fight Goliath, that didn't just just so happen. It was strategically orchestrated by God way back when. So that was the help that he needed. Although David had been anointed to be king, he yet came to help Saul. And he helped by, the, by killing this giant, Goliath, that the army was so afraid of. And then, from that point, David fought many battles for the king. And, and instead of him seeing the goodness that was in that, when the women started singing about David killing the, the 10,000 and Saul slaying 1,000, instead of seeing the goodness in that, Instead, instead of seeing what God had given him and being grateful for this man who could kill more than he did. That means this man was working twice or, or, or a hundred times as hard as, as Saul was. And God had sent him somebody like that. But instead of seeing the goodness in that, he became jealous of that. He became jealous because he wanted to be in control. He wanted to have control of that. So he failed that test. He failed that test. And so he wanted to be, he was a, a, a religious controller. And this control, this control that he had um, led to his disobedience. And it ultimately led to him being rejected by God. He became disobedient. Disobedient to the point that he couldn't even be used anymore by God. And so the anointing was removed from him, yet he was still operating. And he was, he, he was so... Um, he was so captivated by this control that he had that he couldn't even see that he was no longer a vessel to be used. He was still working, but he had failed that test. Don't be so consumed and wanting to be in control that you fail the test that God is taking you through when he's taking you. But if we can take a back seat to whatever God is doing. God is the one that's in control. You know, yesterday on our ride home, and, I, and, and for a, a little while now, I've just been thinking about this. I'm like, everybody wants to be in first place. Everybody wants to be in first place. They teach you either you're first and you win, or you're in, if, if you, it was a movie. He said, if you're not first, you're last. There's no, no second place. And so I was thinking about it, and it hit me again yesterday on our ride home. Like, I'm a, I'm good with being in second place. I'm good and be I'm I'm so good. I'm so good, and I'm not not saying like my character, but I'm good with being in second place because God is the one who is in first place. If I'm keeping Him first, then I can see myself as in second place, second place. We have this, this, this need to be in first place and that, that need to be in first place and be in control, it, it, it will cause us to not even relinquish our control with God, to God. And I talked about when God showed that to me about being in control, being the driver of the car. When he wanted to take control, I'm yet still trying to reach because I just couldn't relinquish that control. I, I felt I still had to be in some, I, I have to be the one to be in control when God is saying, you, in order to trust him, we have to let go of the control. Let go of the control and allow God to do what he wants to do. If we can't do that, then we'll be disobedient. We'll fall out of place. We'll fall out of being, being a, a vessel that God can use. Because disobedience is rebellion. It's rebellion. And so it's one, it's one of the ways that we're tested. Oops. It's one of the ways that we're tested. It's one of the ways that we're tested. 
And so we have to relinquish that, that control. God is in control. And when even when situations, we look at situations and they don't look like what we think they should look like, trust God anyway. See the goodness, even in the bad situations. David, I mean, uh, Saul thought that that was a bad thing that David had more popularity than he did. He started to compare himself. He, he opened the door and let the enemy in. That's what comparison does to us. That's what the control does. So the second one of the the, the second way that we can be tested is is through um, through bitterness, through going through, through some things with people. And I'm telling you, I've gone through that place and dealt with that whole anger thing. The whole anger thing that can lead to bitterness. There are people who come against their job. Their assignment is to come against us. And we're being tested in that. What does the Bible say about your enemy? What does the Bible say about people who use you? He said, pray for them. Pray for them. Still, you, We still treat them the same way we would treat anybody else. You don't do to them what they're doing to you. That's not... That's not the way that that's not the way God operates. That's not the way Jesus operates. And the and the, the the greatest example of that is that he had 12 disciples that walked with him. 12 of them and one gave him up. He knew. He knew beforehand that Judas was going to do what he did. He he was hurt by that. It's hurtful to have when your friends turn their backs on you, when they backstab you and they go off with somebody else. That I'm telling you that thing that's a thing that hurts. It hurts to no end. But we're yet still supposed to operate in the same way that Jesus did. He knew that Judas, his trusted follower, was going to betray him. But he didn't just he didn't become bitter about it. He didn't become bitter about it. Every one of us, every one of us that God has called to something, are we're going to have our own Judas experience. We we gonna have somebody or somebody's that that get close to us only to betray us, only to sell us out to somebody else, and we have a choice in that. Pass the test. Pass the test. Don't become bitter. Become better. Take that that they that that hurt and that 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 take that and turn it around, because the Bible said. He uses all of it. He uses, he works it all out for our good. Even those bad situations, though those bad things that hurt us, he yet still uses us. How did he respond? He yet still went to the cross. He yet still went to the cross. He knew that he was going to do it. He could have kicked it. it. What was his response to Judas when he knew that he was going to betray him? What did he do? Along with the other disciples, he still washed Judas' feet. Knowing that this man was going to betray him, that he was going to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver. People will sell you out for much of nothing. But his response was he still washed his feet. Can you still humble yourself before a person that stabs you in the back? Can you still humble yourself before a person that use you, that talk about you, that will throw you out, that will put your business out there? Can you still humble yourself and do what God calls you to do before them? I'm going to tell you, there was something, I, I've gone through that where I, I felt somebody owed me an apology. And God said, well, you just apologize to them. It don't matter what they did. And when they ask you for something, then give it to them. Can you do that? Can you pass that test? If you don't, guess what? These same tests come around time and time again. They come around time and time again. You have to take these tests until you pass them. The third test that we can go through is a test of power. It's a test of power. Power is the opposite of servanthood. See, we're supposed to be serving. We're not supposed to be looking for a place of power, being in a position just to use that. Jesus had all authority. All authority in heaven and in earth. He had all power and authority. But yet when, when Satan came to him, when he came to him and tempted him on the top of the mountain and told him to use his power to remove himself or, or give himself bread, what did he do? He didn't use his influence. He didn't take his power and show Satan, yeah, I got this power and I can do that and more. 
He told him no. You won't, you, I'm not going to be tempted by that. I'm not going to be tempted by that. He didn't use it. He didn't use it, but yet he still humbled himself. He spoke the word. He spoke the word to him and told him, just like we're supposed to use. We're not supposed to be using the, the power and authority that we have to show people who we are. We're supposed to use it to serve. That's what we've been called to. And I'm telling you, it's folks that get a little, if some you can, all they need is just a little bit of power. Just a little bit of power. And their true, true, the true them comes out. And so we're tested in that, we're tested in that place. When you get power, do you still serve? Can you still serve? Can you still be a leader? I love the, when, well, I, I take it. Um, there's a difference between a boss and a leader. A boss is somebody who uses their authority to, to, to boss people around, to make them do things that, one, they don't want to do, and they use the people. But a leader is one who gets in with the people, work alongside them. They serve with them, not make people serve them. And so we are in that same, we're tested in that same, ple that same place. Jesus was a, a leader, but he was a servant. He said he came to serve the people, and that's what he did. He served the people. He washed the disciples' feet. He walked with the people. He fed them. This is what he did. I'm telling you, he is a model of what we, we should be. And we have to pass these tests before we can ever go to the next level that God has for us. And the fourth way of testing that we're going to talk about today is greed. Greed. So we've already talked about control, bitterness, being tested in control, being tested in bitterness, being tested by power, and then being tested with greed. It, and, and that's a difficult one. That's a difficult one. Greed is, is one of them big monsters. It's one of them things where people, if you're not in a place with God, you seeking, we're always seeking something. We were created to worship God. That's what we were created for. But when we don't, we, we, because we were born into this sin, we, we'll, we'll start to worship other things. And then that, that void that we have that we want to fill, we could never fill it. We could never fill it. It could never be enough. Have you seen people, people in, in places of power, people in places of wealth, they continue to try to get more? Because they can never fulfill that, that, that desire that they have. And it becomes a thing of greed. Money has the ability um, to, to greatly influence for either good or for bad. I love it. To, there's some folks who really break it down because people think that having money, if you, if you have uh, wealth, that it, it Christian. If you have wealth, if Christians have wealth, you're not supposed to have that. That's an evil thing. I don't know why they think that Christian folks can't have money or that they're not supposed to have wealth. I don't know where they really get that notion from because it's not the truth. But there's, it, it, it has a, it says the, the root, the love, the root, the, the love of money is the root of evil, not money itself. It is the love of money. It is what the love of it will cause you to do. And the love of it will cause folks to do some really bad things to get it or to keep it. And so we're tested in that place because it's either when God gives it to you, are you going to use it for the kingdom? Are you going to do with it what God has called you to do with it? Or are you going to try to keep it for yourself? Use it. Is that your focus? Is that what you are about? So if money is your focus, it becomes a tool of destruction. It, come, it becomes a tool of destruction. But, but it's when it's a byproduct of every, if your relationship with God, that's when it becomes a blessing. When, when, you, when the money is a byproduct, you love God, you seek after him, you seek after all the things of God, that will be added to you. God will give it to you. He will give it to you to be used for his kingdom. It becomes a blessing. You become a blessing. It's not something that you're trying to store up in barns or keep for yourself, but it's something that you want to use to give back, something that you use to do the work that God has created you to do with it. 
And so, yes, many times we're, we're tested in our finances. I'm telling you from a place of not having enough and then having it and, and, and God testing you in what you're going to do with it. What you're going to do with it. That, that includes paying your tithes, giving an offering. If God tells you to go and bless somebody and do this for them with it, all of that. We're being tested in it. In order for God to trust us with much, he has to be able to trust us with the little bit that he gives us. The little bit that he gives us. And so a lot of people start out really good. They start out really good with it. But when they, they get more, they get more, and then they start, when, when the prosperity comes in, they start to stray. They start to move away. I'm telling you, you... I can look at some and it's like they started off in the most humble place, most humblest of places. And it could be six months, it could be two years, it could be five years, whatever the case is. But you can see a, a drastic change from in their focus from being this humble person whose focus was about God to everything is about how you get the money and how you could keep it and what you do with that. I just want, I, whatever God give me, I just want to be in it. If, look, I literally had to break down and this be my sincere, sincere prayer. I know what you call me to be. I know what you call me to have. But if I'm, if, if God, you know me, you know my heart. If I'm not going to be in a place where I stay humble with that, that you give me and do with it, what you tell me to do with it, when it gets into my hands, don't give it to me. Don't give it to me. And I'm telling you, that's a hard one to utter out of your out of my mouth. <laughs> out of my mouth. Because we all want it. But if I ain't going to do right with it, don't give it to me. Don't give it to me. If I'm not going to do right with it, don't give it to me. Because he knows me better than I do. I can say all day long what I'll do with what God gives me. But only God actually knows what I would do with it when he puts it in my hands. He knows well before I ever get it what I would do with it if he puts it in my hands. And I'm telling you, it's, he will test us. He will test us, not just for his sake, but for ours. So you know who you are. Can you even be honest with yourself to say that? If I ain't going to do right, don't give it to me. Can you tell you, can you say that to God? Or do you think that, you know, many of us who think if we speak things that God just believe what comes out of our mouth. No, he, he, he believes what's in our hearts. He knows what's there. We could confess anything with our mouth. But it's only it's only what's in our heart. So it's it's there are people that there, there are many people who can 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 blossom spiritually through adversity, through the things that we go through. We can we we yet can stand and be built upon that. And then it's some who can there's some if there's more who can blossom through adversity, but there's there's few who can who can blossom spiritually through prosperity. There's few. There's few, and God is testing us to just to see who those few are. He's testing us to see who those those are. So be aware, be aware of when you're in testing. You know when you're being tested. We know when we're being we're being tested. When we go through, just we have to be in a place where we know what the test is. Is it control? Is it a test of the being uh, becoming bitter is it a test of um a power struggle or is it a test of greed are we being tested on whether or not we will be greedy and we can be confident that each one of these tests is being thrown our way because god has called us to something because he has anointed us for something he's anointed us for a work that he has for us to do and so will we pass the test will we pass the test there are tests that I have passed and there are tests that I did not pass. <laughs> I did not pass. But the more we go through, you I'm telling you, when you don't pass, it's a lesson. Do you take the lesson? Do you take it and apply it to your life so the next time that you're tested in that area, you can pass the test? You, you've grown just a little bit more. You've matured just a bit more. 
And then that we can stay in a place where we are vessels that God, I'm telling you, I don't want, I don't, these are our examples of a what not to do. What not to do. Saul fell out of place, out of disobedience. And a and way for us to stay, to, to pass these tests, is to be in a place with God. Is to stay close to God. To stay focused on Him. Seek Him first and His kingdom. Seek His kingdom and His righteousness. If we're doing that, if we're doing that, God is always, it's a continued work, a continued work on our hearts, continued work on our hearts. And so we can ask God for the grace to walk through these tests. We can ask God for the grace to walk through these tests and be victorious in every one of them. I don't want to walk through these tests without God. I don't want to be, I don't want to walk through any of my tests without God. We're going to be tested, but we can go through with God. Ask God for, for grace. Ask God for the grace that we need to pass the test. It's a gift. It's a gift that's freely given to us. And when I say ask, I don't say, I'm not saying ask him for it in a way that we, we uh, take it for granted. But ask God for the grace to get through the test. So that's all I have for today. That's the word. Um, four stages of testing that we go through. Four areas that we go through being tested in. When God has a call on our life. When there is there is something that he's anointed us for. And we can look at so many of them. There's so many more examples. Not just Saul. But there are many in the Bible that we can look at. The examples of the test that they had to go through. In order to do uh, the work that God had called them to do, do what uh, God had anointed them to do. There are many that we can look at. Joseph, Jacob, Abraham. There's so many. So many. Even the Joseph that was, uh, Mary's, uh, became Mary's husband. There's so many that we can look at. So I thank God for the word. I thank God for each of you that will have an opportunity to view this. I didn't want it to not happen on today. You know what? The enemy likes to come. And uh, he'll, he'll come through with his tactics, his strategies, and I, even the interference of breaking everything down. I have gotten to the point where I refuse. I refuse to give up and I refuse to give in to the enemy. Whatever he does to come against us, I'm telling you, God will give us that and much more of what we need in order to defeat the enemy. So just to him on today who thought he might have won, he did not. I'm still able to do this, and I'm telling you, it will still be posted. And those who need to see it, those who need it on today, will be able to view it. That is my prayer. I thank God for each and every one of you. Father, we just thank you on today, oh God. Lord, I thank you, oh God, just for the, the, the mind to continue in what you have, uh, to persevere, oh God, even when the enemy comes against us. Father, I thank you, oh God, for even being tested in this area to not give up, but relinquish my control, oh God, allow you to be in control and not walk away. Oh God, not walk away defeated by the enemy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. But Father, we thank you for the testing, oh God. We thank you that you have prepared us for every test that we must go through. Father, we ask you on today for the grace, oh God, that we need to pass every test, oh God. Father, we thank you that you have even called us, oh God, that you've even anointed us for that which lies ahead of us, that purpose that you have created us for, in the name of Jesus. Now strengthen every person, oh God, every person who views this, oh God, every person, oh God, connected to me, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would strengthen them, strengthen them and give them the grace, oh God, to pass each and every test that we face. I thank you, oh God, for every level, oh God, that we have been increased into in Jesus name. Father, thank you, oh God, for the work that you are doing in us and through us, oh God, in Jesus name. Father, we thank you, oh God, that that um your word says to for us to be holy as you are holy. So, Father, we thank you, oh God, that we yet still gather together, oh God, to seek your word, to seek your righteousness, oh God, that we may walk according to your will and your statutes, oh God, in Jesus name. Father, I thank you for every miracle that you will perform on today, oh God. I thank you for that which you are doing in the lives of your people, that which you are doing, that which you've already done, oh God, and that which you are yet still doing in Jesus' name. 
Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you the praise for this day, O oh God. We thank you for even the days that you have planned for us that lie ahead, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Well, I guess I can't really go through all of the, uh, if you're new, because there's nobody here but me right now. But I thank you to those who will tune in, those who are a part of this family, those who will get to see this. Um, I, I welcome those who will... Uh, get a chance to experience this broadcast in any capacity in Jesus name we welcome you um, to to this family we welcome you to all the things that we do here at hidden in God here um, in the hope morning hope mornings broadcast um, I don't even I'm not gonna go through all of the announcements either ah, renew renew me father God good morning so awesome to see you. Thank you for being here with me, although we're doing this one by voice on this morning on Periscope. Um, and the, to those that are on Instagram, thank you so much for taking the time out to be here on this morning. Um, I truly appreciate all of you who actually um, are, are, are uh, what's, what, what's the word, dedicated to being here and being a part of what God is doing. I thank you guys so much. Um, don't um, to those who will come and view this later on Facebook and YouTube. Um, I thank you guys for viewing. I hope that there was something that was said, something that was uh, that we've done that will cause you to come back, join us when we are live. We're here Monday through Friday, 6:45 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 5:45 Central, 4:45 Mountain, and 3:45 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time. Um, I won't go through all of the announcements, uh, but it, you can check out all of the information about us, about this ministry on HiddenInGuide.com. You can go. Um, I will say that uh, if, if this is your first time or you've not had an opportunity to download the Hidden in God app, you can do that as well. You can go and um, check out that on iTunes.com. I was supposed to say in, Instascope. <laughs> Go check it out on iTunes um, um, store. Go over to the Google Play store or go over to the Amazon store, but go and download the app. You can always go back and view any of these prayers. They are all available in there. There are sermons. There is a Bible. There's journaling. There is so much, but that is our way of connecting with the community, connecting with each other, and helping you to grow in your relationship with God. Um, you can go check out all of our, our Christian business at shop.hiddenandgod.com. You can check out our Feed 5 mission over on the website. You can check out the radio station in app or on the website. But everything um, about us, you can get to everything um, that, that is connected to us by going to HiddenInGod.com. You can support us. You can donate. You can do all of that on HiddenInGod.com. I love you guys so much. Don't forget, um, you have something in you that somebody is in need of. So keep your hearts open, your eyes open, your ears attentive to the things that God is saying and whatever it is that he's showing you. And then be obedient. The whole point of this one today, the whole point of the testing is to be obedient to what God has called us to do. So do that. Do just that and see how God, how your life will be blessed, how God will open up the floodgates. He will open up the doors. Um, many things will, will come your way when you are obedient to what God has called you to do. The anointing can flow. The oil can flow. And I just want, I want the oil to flow. <laughs> I want the oil to flow in my life. So I thank God for each and every one of you. Um, last but not least, don't forget that you set the atmosphere. Oh, the announcement, the, the conference. Uh, our conference, our IP3, which is Inspiring Passion, Purpose, and Potential. Our uh, conference is taking place, Conference 2020, this year on June 12th and 13th. Save those dates. Please, please make yourself available. Don't miss it. We are going to have a phenomenal time. It is uh, two days, Friday and Saturday, and we will have a luncheon. But I am so I am so excited about this conference, excited about what God is going to do in it. It will be at the Holiday Inn Conference Center here in the Michiana area in um, Mishawaka, Indiana, on Douglas Road. So you can look up the information on that. Um, it, it's actually up on Facebook. The event is up on uh, Facebook so you can go and check out the information on that and there is yet still more information to come. But you can go and check out the information on that. You can purchase your tickets for the conference um, and start planning 
for those dates now. I tried getting it out early enough, but we had to get the venue in order for me to announce the dates. But this is yet still plenty enough time for you to prepare to get to the conference. All right. So I love you guys. Don't forget that you set the atmosphere. You command your day. Make it a phenomenal day. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.